Hello and welcome back to Fantasy Star Online Episode 3, where today we are recovering from what happened to the morgue. And we're uh, going to see if we can rescue Orland, who has some info on Blitz. Orland managed to obtain new info on Blitz, but soon after he was attacked by two arcs. I'm going to his rescue. See, we've got choke points on this Caleb map. Ooh, Endu. Endu is always a little scary to see on the other side because Rampage is so good. It's so good. Well, at least now Orland is acknowledging Endu's existence instead of being like, oh yeah, that KC guy. We keep the mag. Start. We always keep the mag. Okay, are we gonna see? No. Okay. So I'm guessing that that's Endu's pan arms. Which one is that? Yep. Alright, he's gonna be coming after us with his rampage. So, ooh. A double saber, if memory serves, has exhaust. And if it doesn't have exhaust, then it's got... Uh, Steady damage. We'll see. Let's find out. Okay, so it's Artifice. So he has to use action cards if he wants it to not lose AP, and it also doesn't do very good against story characters, which I guess at least helps keep it a little balanced. Action. With that plus four AP on such a cheap thing. Yeah. We're going around this way because that way we won't have to deal with Endu coming for us. Oh, wow. He is uh, really going all in on guard creatures, isn't he? Yeah, whatever. Hopefully we can break this choke. Also, in going all in on guard creatures, he blocked himself from being able to come after us with his rampage, which is, I guess, good for us. Setting this barrier to protect our mag. Why would you move away? What's your game here, Orland? Defense. Kind of annoying how many hit points barbarous wolves have. Hey, another mag. Getting both mags at once is always nice. So, Endu can only set things that cost one at this point. And it looks like he's getting through. Oh, are we getting... Oh, you can use that on other people? Really would have saved that for Endu, but whatever. Stop rolling low! Uh, oh! Wait, how did... How did he get it as well? Is it because he was next to it? 
All right. Well, I guess some XP might start getting printed by those charities. Ooh, almost got through the pan arms. And he didn't use an action card. And now he's through the pan arms. Why would you attack the wolf after going to all the trouble of killing the pan arms? All right, so our choke is broke for now. She can still summon something into the gap. Cool, we got another barrier to equip if our current one dies. And do really going all in on guard creatures. And Rio trying to move out of the way. I guess we're going to be shooting Endu through the gate. Let's go ahead and save his double saber. Okay, I guess we didn't really save it, but we tried. That's a good roll. All right. Nice walk. And we've still got a barrier. No need to equip this one. So unfortunately, we can't use gun attack across the barrier because we do not have fixed range with Killria. Oh, that's right. The walk swaps enemy attack and health when it hits them. It's definitely interesting. And now Endu is naked. Probably shouldn't have thrown that away, but whatever. So we have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points used. So we could equip another crush bullet if we let our barrier die. I would have saved the saber if I was you, but whatever. for me to move. Alright, we win. Unfortunately, AH swap does not work on story characters. Take a B. Give me another poily slime. MA 60s, I remember being decent. Inferno Bazooka is alright. Another Dice Plus one's good to have. Another sword attack is good to have. Orland will like that sword attack. Ooh, split boost or spirit boost, depending on which NPC in the game you ask. So, what's the vice? Oh. 
Okay. Uh, MNA60 is not as good as I remembered. Maybe I'm remembering having used the MNA60s in episode one on my first character. That's probably it. So yeah, that's a thing. Good against big things, I guess. And split boost. Cost two gives you dice roll bonus AP. So that can be very, very good, or it can be eh. But damage-wise, it matches Slash at a roll of two. And all the dice plus ones you have, they increase the range, not the total roll, which is interesting. Yeah, it, it's a really good card a lot of the time. It can be devastating. Or it can be just all right. Thank you, Commander. We now know the location of Blitz's final message box, which is in Nebula, Montana. If only Kranz was all right. Wait, final message box? He only left two? <laughs> all right, time for another quest. Because this place is all gloomy. We don't want to stay here longer than we have to. A project on the construction of a villa at Nebula, Montana on Galdaval Island for a high-ranking government official has begun. We must investigate the area first, but we lack the manpower. Therefore, we'd like you to do it for us. But this time, we ask that you keep this assignment a secret. Why? Because you're scouting a location for a villa for a high-ranking official and you don't want anyone to figure out where he lives? Or the fact that he's getting a house on Regal before, like, anyone else? Is this our first time going to Nebula, Montana? Okay, no deck loop. I see Cranu's deck title makes it seem she's going to be having things return to her hand, hence returning. And yeah, let's use I Like Sword. Like we really have time for this. Yeah, it's a great view and I'm sure it's a nice place for a villa, but we haven't even got the populace off the ship yet. And here we are constructing special buildings just for government officials? Ridiculous, isn't it? Oh well, we still need you to do a thorough job scouting the area. We're counting on you. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's a little, uh, dirty. But hey, what's new? Pioneer 2 people, government people, are doing things that are dirty. an okay hand, but we can do better. We did slightly same-ish. I guess we've got a defense card. That's not nothing. Oh no, is it gonna be Rap Apocalypse? So hopefully we roll a four or a six. A five is one of those. And yeah, sword's actually better than saber in this case. Because then I can still do part of what I was hoping to do if we rolled high. Or, well, actually, that wouldn't really help us any, so we'll just stay here. I was thinking, oh, we can still move one to the side and then attack with the sword. And then we can just walk on up, but... That doesn't get us any closer to Cranu, and in fact puts us off center, so if anything, it makes us potentially have to spend a point later to correct that. So yeah, we're just gonna good job, camera. Just gonna slap the rappy. A good old rap slap. 
Unfortunately, it lived. But we've got a dodge, so it's all fine. So now at this point, I am kind of regretting not having moved. But we've got our saber equipped, so it's not like we've got nothing out of it. Wow, that's a little hefty for a deck about returning. Does that thing return? Or does it give group bonuses to things that... Okay, so it's got dash, so it goes back to her hand. And it's got machine AP count. That's a little scary. Well, as long as she doesn't set any other machines, it's a non-issue. Good job, camera. Can't wait till we move one space forward and the camera doesn't do that anymore. Good, she didn't have two guards. But then again, if she did and she used them, the lack of deck loop would mean that we could trust them to never show up. Do I want to equip that slicer? I mean, it is a sword. Oh, now she's got two of them. So they each have three AP. I can probably live with that, considering they're taking up all of her creature slots. Why does everything have to try and get in my way? I mean, attacking this thing at least feels better than sitting here doing nothing. Might get rid of some defense cards as well, but nope. I like how the Slicer has Dark Slayer just to emulate the fact that green weapons sometimes have percents. So this one's got... I guess 50% dark. That's amazing for just a low tier weapon, like a plain old slicer. Then again, we don't have the higher tier versions of weapons. We've only got rare weapons and base weapons in this game. They definitely left some, uh, some things on the table. Well, there goes our shield. Oh, are those things just going to be doing, like, constant suicide attacks? Change, nice. That could get annoying. Set. At least I keep getting high rolls, but would it kill them to let me also have a non-zero defense roll? Yeah, this will open up three attacks. I'm sure I should have done these in reverse order or something, but... Nah, it's fine. That thing's gonna die. And it'll go back to her hand, and then she'll have to spend eight points to summon them both back. Actually, no, it won't go back to her hand, because her hand is full. You can't have more than six cards. So this one's just going into the discard pile. Never to return. Nice. And that means she might not have the attack points to both summon something and hit me, so it doesn't matter that I rolled a 1 for defense. And yeah, she... Well, she can attack me with that, but... Defense. Do I even need to care? Alright, let me see a 4 or better for my attack die. All right, it's a four. We'll take it. Wait, does this have dash or return? No, it's got death. Ooh. 
Well, chances are decent that we'll actually end up killing the thing. Yeah, so we don't need to worry about Death Companion. If she had used dodge, then we would have lost our sword, but she didn't have a dodge, clearly. Because NPCs will always use a defense card if they have one. For once, we roll a two on our defense die, but nothing is here to attack us. All right, we'll set this. And then we'll just walk forward. Can't attack right now, but that's fine. And we really don't need that slicer. Hi, Rappy. Ooh. Don't like that. And of course she's having it attack and not the Rappy. I'm not surprised at all. But it would have been nice if she attacked with the Rappy. All right, show me a six. That's not a six. So if I move, then nothing changes about what we can do. So do I go for her or do I go for the Merlin? I think we go for her. So this will still be our weakest attack, even though we used a card to get plus one AP for it. And she's got nothing, so she's just going to take all the damage. Which I believe will leave her at three HP left. Yeah. If the Merlin hadn't killed our sword, we would have won right here. Because we still would have had an extra point of sword bonus. And we cannot block whatever the Merlin's going to do this round, which is unfortunate. I see she's being a little cowardly. Well, Merlin's not going to kill anything. That's good. Almost killed her. Would have been hilarious if she just lost because of using that. I don't think I've ever seen an enemy story character straight up kill itself with anything other than, like, a weapon that always damages them, but... Would have been hilarious to see them actually take an action that killed them. No, we don't need to set anything, because we win. Unless she's got two guards. But we can check for that. And then we win. Okay, yeah, we win. Easy peasy. Oily Slime. Now that I know we can get them, I want all I can get. Or at least just two more. One or two more. I would accept one. Change attack. I don't remember that card. So what's this one? Revenge. Okay. This would be fine if not for the since the time this card was first set. I don't remember whether that's actually the case. I think it might just look at all the things destroyed, period. But even so, it's it, it takes a while to get this to the point where it's actually worth its cost. And then we got three things that we already had three of. Let's change attack. Ah! 
I mean, if you're fighting something that's got a huge amount of HP and a low amount of AP, then that's a thing. Provided you have another attack coming at it immediately. But it's... It's difficult to make this actually feel worth it. I guess if something's got huge AP and, like, no HP, then that's a swap you could do. And if you're attacking something with zero AP, then you kill it outright, so that's a good use of it. But, yeah, it's... It's tough to really effectively use change attack. And what's trash one? Oh. That's annoying. Good work. It looks like we can build an excellent villa. By the way, my father is the high-ranking official that this is for. Actually, he's building this place as my gift for my upcoming marriage. I guess I'll be one of the first people to live on Regal. I'm also quitting my job. If you ever tire of being a commander, consider taking my position. Gunther Development Division. Well, uh, bye Gunther, I guess. Have a nice life? All right, well, that's going to be it for this episode. Join us next time when we will go on Sighting 3 and see what we're sighting. See you then, friends. <laughs>